Hello everyone and welcome back to My Candid World. Today's video is going to be 10 little tips and tricks in order to become a boss entrepreneur. And some of these tips and tricks you might have never heard of before. We'll be describing some new terms, some new technical terms. And if you wanna make sure you get all 10 of these amazing tips, make sure you watch till the end of the video. And I hope you guys are liking. I'm testing out a new setup in this video. So let me know what your thoughts of it are. So casually keep diving into concrete. Number one is going to be to become a polymath. Now, a polymath is an individual who has a wide range of knowledge and skills. And obviously, if you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to have a lot of different skills. You have to know a lot. Now, I'm not saying you have to know absolutely everything about what you do or absolutely everything in the business sphere, but you have to have more than one skill in order to survive. You can't just be like amazing at graphics or you can't just be amazing at writing. You have to have skills in writing, in graphics, in social media. It's a constant learning process, but it's best if you go into it at least having a handful of skills. Number two is going to be integrative complexity. Now, integrative complexity is a psychometric that refers to the degree to which reasoning and thinking involve recognizing and integrating multiple perspectives. And you definitely want to be an integratively complex person if you want to become a boss entrepreneur. Because basically what, what it means is that if you're able to use reasoning and thinking and tie it together with multiple perspectives and ideas on a topic, you're going to be able to use a lot more information when you reach a decision or when you have to decide something important in your business. And if you're able to use much more information, you're able to add in a lot of different you know, perspectives and positions, and it can help you create a better product, a better whatever you're releasing, pushing, or creating. Number three is going to be something called learning transfer. Now, learning transfer is the ability of a learner to be able to use the behaviors, skills, and anything that you acquire in a learning event and apply it to a task. Now, I don't know if you can even just understand how amazing or how important learning transfer is from that definition, but it's okay, I'm gonna explain it. So basically being able to have a learning event or more, more commonly referred to as a learning experience and being able to take the different skills and things that you learn from that and immediately apply it to a different scenario, a situation, something that you're working on is an incredible skill to have and it can really level you up in terms of becoming a boss entrepreneur because if you're able to do that constantly you're going to improve your skills you're going to improve exponentially and you're going to see a lot of progress in what you're doing number four is going to be elon musk's two-step learning method in order to learn information faster and more effectively now, when Elon Musk has been interviewed about how he learns things so quickly and like is able to just keep them and apply them to what he's doing, he gave two rules. Number one is to make sure you're building a tree of knowledge. And I'm going to break that down for you. Basically what it means is you wanna focus on having the fundamentals, the base or the trunk of whatever it is you're learning. And once you've got that down and you've learned it, you can then branch out into other skills, abilities, and knowledge that are connected to this base tree, the fundamentals, what you're learning. And that especially ties in once you factor rule two. Number two is that you cannot remember what you can't connect. If you have a random piece of information and you can't connect it or tie it to anything else, that random piece of information is going to drift off in your mind and you're not going to be able to use it. So when Elon Musk says, you know, to connect what you're learning, it factors into the branches because you want to make sure these branches inter interwine 
and that they make sense together. You don't just want to be learning random pieces of information. You want to be learning information that can build upon one another and connect like a family tree. Number five is going to be to have a mission statement. Now this becomes super important when you're an entrepreneur because you have to have that ground mission statement that aligns you. A mission statement allows you to set and clearly define these are my goals this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And it immediately erases any other distractions or helps you to erase any other distractions because you can easily look at your mission statement and say, does this align with my goals? Does this align with what I'm trying to complete and achieve and get done? And if it doesn't, you know to get rid of it because it doesn't align with your core beliefs and goals with what you're doing. Now, some people even take it further and they have a personal and a business mission statement. Your personal mission statement is what you as a person are going to do or accomplish or what you believe in. And your business mission statement might be what you want your business to achieve, how you want it to move and go forward. Number six is going to be a tip or trick that I've learned more recently and I can't believe it took me so long to even learn it. And it's going to be to identify opportunities especially when you're an entrepreneur and even a small business owner you have to be able to identify where there's a hole in whatever market space or niche you're in and be like i can fill that i can create something that will fill that need that hole whatever it is in the market and if you're able to constantly identify these opportunities you're going to find a lot more success in your endeavors for example when the pandemic first started and people realized, oh wait, soap, hand sanitizer, and masks are going to be off the shelves. We saw a huge influx in people selling masks, but those who got on it, you know, first and got the recognition and were like known for selling the masks first, obviously had a lot more success than those who waited a few weeks or a few days even or even months after suddenly start selling masks and people already had all the masks they needed or already had someone they trusted to buy masks from you have to identify these opportunities asap and then you're going to find a lot more success number seven is going to be to utilize design thinking i'm going to break this down for you Basically, design thinking has a few steps in it and you're looking at something for the, from the perspective of a designer, someone who's creating something, a product, a service, whatever it is specifically for you. Now, the first step when it comes to utilizing design thinking is empathizing. We spoke before about recognizing where there's a hole or a spot in the market that you can fill. You have to empathize first to, to fill that hole, you have to realize, oh, people might be struggling with this, people might need this. And once you're like, okay, I can help with that or I can provide that, you're already you know, on the path to utilizing design thinking. The next step in utilizing design thinking is going to be to define. You wanna define what it is you're creating or offering. And this is going to be really important because, okay, you've realized that there is a space that you can fill where you can provide something what specifically are you going to be providing you have to know exactly what it is because if you go into it unclear the market or your audience is also going to be unclear on what you're offering and they're not going to want to purchase something where they're not exactly sure what they're going to be getting now that you've successfully empathized and defined you're going to want to prototype now that you know what it is you're going to be offering it's time to go into the first stages or trial stages of whatever it is for example, if you're in a coaching business and you're prototyping, maybe you're going to release your first version of the you know, coaching program and you're going to ask a few people to test it out and give you their feedback. You're prototyping it before you release the full thing out to the public. And it's very important you prototype because for example, another example is if you have a shirt business or something and you just immediately launch the product without trying it first, feeling the texture, the way it fits, the quality of your design, you may end up putting a faulty product on the market and people are obviously not going to want to buy that. The last step of utilizing design thinking is going to be to implement. Now that you've prototyped whatever it is you're offering and you know that, you know, okay, I've put it through a bunch of stages, I've tested, and this is a product that I'm fine with, 
it is time to implement it. It is time to begin the process of pushing it out to the market, fully launch it, do everything that you need to do. And now that you've had like, you know, you have these reviews and these feedback that you've used on it, you've improved it now and you're confident and like, yes, this is something that I can push to that market, push into that hole and it will fill it up completely. Number eight on our tips and tricks into becoming a boss entrepreneur is going to be to be very, very resourceful. Resourcefulness is so key when you become you want to become a successful entrepreneur because if you're not able to work with what you have and make tweaks and changes to, you know, best use what you have, you're not going to find that great success because you might rush into buying stuff you know, that you don't need yet or buying services that you don't need yet instead of utilizing what you already have. And that's going to cause you some more cost. It's going to be more expensive and you're not going to really get the peak performance that you could with the stuff that you already have. You might end up with stuff you don't even need that are dragging you behind. We are now on number nine, getting very close to the last of our tips and tricks. And I wanna remind you that if you found yourself taking notes and getting a lot of information and value from this video, consider liking, consider commenting down below, and consider subscribing and joining us here in the Candid community. We'd love to have you, you know, just comment down below, you know, I just subscribed. I'm eager for more videos like this. Chelsea, please give us more videos like this where you talk about being an entrepreneur and a business owner. But moving into number nine, it's going to be to keep track of your expenses and your finances. And, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be spending money, you're going to be making money. And if you don't have a firm grasp on exactly how much you're spending and making, then you might find yourself spending more than you have. And you're going to find yourself suddenly not having the money when you actually need it and not actually building this money. Instead, it's just constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down and not really increasing. You can use anything from apps to printouts like expenses or finances or budgeting planners. There's so many different tools out there that there is no excuse for not being able to track your expenses. Find one that works for you. Maybe you're a digital person, maybe you're a physical person, but make sure that you, you you can be able to just pick up and be like, I spent and gained this much that month. I'm spending and using this much this month. Okay, I can then budget. You, and then you can do so many things once you know where your money is going and how it's coming in. Number 10, we're here on our very last tip and trick to become a boss entrepreneur. And it's going to be to network and make connections. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur, no matter what field you're in, it definitely helps to have some friends, whether more experienced or not, in that field, who you can lean on, who you can chat with, who you can share information and collaborate with. And that is the number one thing. If you have people in your field that you can collaborate and work with, both of you can get success, both of you can reach new audiences and maybe even help each other build or you know improve the market that you're in. And that is such a valuable thing to have. You don't wanna be alone when you're doing something. You wanna have people who can relate to what it is you're doing, to whatever you're doing. You know, social media marketers always have social media marketing friends. Business owners usually have business owner friends. Whatever it is you're doing, have a friend or friends in that field. And with that tip, it's going to lead us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much. If you made it to the 10th tip and trick on this video, let me know in the comment section below so I can show you some love because if you've made it this far, you are an amazing person and I thank you so, so much. I do wanna remind you that if you want more videos like this, the only way I can know is if you actually type and let me know in the comment section below or if you like the video and I can also see that as positive feedback. Once again, I appreciate you so, so much, and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace out.